So in your chloroplast, there's an outer membrane, and then there's an inner membrane. Yeah. Then we've got stacks of membrane, which are called... Stromal, mesalkoids. They're called These are called grana. Uh, so those, those bits are called grana. And then we have membranes running between them, which, as you said, are called thylakoids. Yeah. And then you have the cytoplasm in here, which is called... Stroma. Well done. And what else have you got in the stroma? Do you remember? Um. You've got a single loop of DNA. Yeah. And that contains the genes for some of the enzymes that have worked for the Calvin cycle in the stroma. And we've also got, in here, um, we've got some ribosomes to carry out protein synthesis. We've also got some starch grains because the products of photosynthesis um, need to be stored as, and rather than being soluble sugars, they're turned into an insoluble storage polysaccharide. A thylakoid membrane. So here's the membrane, here's the top membrane, and so this is the stroma here, and this is the stroma, and this is the thylakoid interior. So we start with a photosystem. A photosystem is a blob of different pigment molecules. The pigment molecules are in what's called a <coughs> antenna complex and the antenna complex has lots of different pigment molecules each of which absorb a different wavelength of light. So some absorb red, some absorb blue, some absorb yellow. Very few and they all channel that light to a single chlorophyll A molecule. And that chlorophyll A molecule has a magnesium ion in it. And all of this energy gets channeled towards it. And when it has enough energy, it loses an electron. So going back to this photosystem, this is photosystem one. And this has the magnesium ion in the middle of it. So lots and lots of light has hit this, and when lots and lots of light hits that, that produces an electron, a high energy electron, that goes through a chain of carriers and back to photosystem one. Now, this chain of carriers is in the thylakoid membrane, and it moves protons from the stroma into the thylakoid interior. So the energy from light is being used to move protons from the stroma into the thylakoid interior. Mm -hmm. It's moving them against their concentration gradient, from where there are few to where there are lots. Now those then flow out through an enzyme, and this enzyme is ATP synthetase. So they flow out and they generate ATP. And this is exactly the same as the flowing out of protons in um, oxidative phosphorylation in mitochondria. Okay. Vague memories of that? Yeah. Okay, good. So, <coughs> this is photophosphorylation. Photolight, yeah. phosphorylation, ADP to ATP. And this is cyclic photophosphorylation because it's the same electron that's leaving and it's leaving here and it's coming back into photosystem one. Okay. So this is cyclic photophosphorylation. But the only product that it makes is it makes ATP and nothing else. <coughs> okay, so the next stage that we add on to this is a process called non-cyclic photophosphorylation and this is the amazing thing which makes life on earth as it is possible because this produces the electrons that you need 
So again, at the center of photosystem 2 is a, photo, is a chlorophyll A molecule. And that chlorophyll A molecule is getting loads and loads of different wavelengths of light all channeled towards it to produce a single electron of the magnesium. Okay. That electron then moves to photosystem 1. And as it does, it moves through a chain of carriers, and that chain of carriers moves more protons from the stroma into the thylakoid interior, and they then flow out, generating ATP. Now the electron that's been moved across here then does something remarkable. What it does is it joins with it joins with NADP. And when you join a, an electron to NADP, what do you produce? NADPH. Well done. So it's reduced now. It's picked up that electron. Now this occurs here, but now this is missing an electron. So photosystem 2 is missing an electron. So how does it deal with that? Um, how are we going to replace the electron here? Yeah, we're going to take water yeah. and we're going to split it. Now the splitting is called lysis. Yeah. And we're going to use light energy, so photo, to do this. So this is known as photolysis or photolysis. Okay. And then that's going to produce oxygen. That comes off as a waste product. Mm -hmm. It's going to produce hydrogen ions, and that's going to help to add to our gradient so we can keep making more ATPs. And most importantly, it's going to produce electrons that are going to replace the electrons that have been lost from photosystem oh. 2 that have traveled to photosystem 1 by cyclic photophosphorylation. So the electrons have left photosystem 2, they've gone to photosystem 1, they've been stuck onto NADP forming NADPH down here. So 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 photosystem 2 happens before photosystem 1? Yes. Okay. So this photo this electron here travels across to photosystem 1. As it travels across, the protons go across the membrane. Those protons flow out through ATP synthetase generating ATP. These electrons end up joining with the NADP, forming NADPH. So the products of this reaction are ATP and NADPH. Also, you produce oxygen, but the oxygen goes off because it's a waste product, and we use it obviously in aerobic respiration. 